Hello Algebra 2, this video lesson is designed to go with a handout that I've provided in class. Um, the handout actually is double-sided, but I'm only going to talk about the front side in this video lesson. That front side talks about factoring techniques for quadratics. And this lesson is going to talk about some special cases where you're able to take shortcuts and arrive more quickly at solutions than um, the um, normal situations which we've already talked about. We've talked about situations where you would factor a quadratic expression or whether you would use a cross them up and split the middle technique to factor a quadratic expression. But there are these four situations, one, two, three, and four, and in each of these situations you can speed up the process a bit. First situation is um, what I've labeled step one here pulling out or factoring out the greatest common factors. So here's an example, 3x squared minus 18x plus 27. Each of the three terms has something in common. This only works if all three terms have something in common, and each of them has three as a factor. If I pull the three out, or factor the three out in other words, then I've, what I have left here is a simpler quadratic expression in the parentheses. This is a lot easier to factor. So. Um, the uh, factors are going to become uh, a pair of binomials, but I don't want to lose track of that 3. That will still be multiplied as part of my answer. So I'm looking now for factors of 9 that add up to make negative 3, and of course those are minus 3 and minus 3. And that's my answer there, 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. Those are the factors of the original expression I was given. Second example here, a little more complicated. Um, all three terms have a constant in common, 2, but they also have an x in common, so I can factor both of those things out. 2x comes out of everything, and so what I'm left with inside the parens is this trinomial, and this I would factor using the cross up technique. Um, 6, whoops, didn't mean to grab that. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. At the bottom I'd put uh, minus 5, so the I'm doing it again. The factors of minus 24 uh, that add up to make minus 5 are 3 and negative 8. So I'm going to keep the 2x. I'm also going to keep the 6x squared and the minus 4. What I'm going to be splitting is this middle part, the minus 5x. So like I said, I've kept the 2x. I've kept the 6x squared. I've kept the minus 4. Split that minus 5x into plus or positive 3x and minus or negative 8x. Now I separate the left side from the right side and what you're going to end up finding on the left is that you're going to have 3x times 2x plus 1 and on the right you're going to have minus 4 times again 2x plus 1. So keeping that, I've got it in green to make it distinct here, 2x throughout, inside the parens I'm going to have 2x times, well one binomial will be the 3x minus the 4, and the other binomial will be this 2x plus 1. Now at this point, this green set of parens isn't really doing anything any longer, and my answer is simply 2x times what I had as my pair of binomials here. And that is this original expression factored. Okay, now the second technique, taking the difference of perfect squares. This works if you have two terms. It only works if you only have two terms, but when you only have two terms, look carefully and see if they happen to be perfect squares, like in this example. 4 is a perfect square, x squared is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. We're called, we refer to this as the difference of perfect squares because this has to be a minus sign also. If it's a plus, this whole technique doesn't help you at all. But if this is a perfect square, it's a minus, and this is a perfect square, then what you can do is set up a pair of binomials and go much more quickly. Take the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of x, which is x, put that in both places. Take the square root of 25, which is 5, put that in both places, and as long as this is a minus sign, then one of these is going to be positive, the other negative, otherwise these two dot binomials are identical. That will always be true. So, um, as an example, try this one for yourself. Hit the pause button. When you come back, and I'll show you how to solve this. Oh, by the way, this is actually putting together the two different ideas that I've shown you so far in this lesson, so make sure you think about both things I've shown you. 
Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. Notice that both the left term and the right term have something in common you could factor out. So you can pull out the GCF, which is 3. And you're going to have left inside x squared minus 81. Now, as I said before, you can factor um, x squared is a perfect square, 81 is a perfect square. So you can separate x into the x's, 81 into the positive 9 and the negative 9. And this is the answer I was hoping that you would reach. Hit the pause button if you're not sure how I did this. Look this through, and when you come back to class, you can let me know if you have any more questions about this problem. Okay, I'm going to assume that you're done looking at this one, and I'm going to move on to the next example. If you have a trinomial, well, let's go back, actually. Hang on just a second. Okay, so let me um, show you that we're coming from this third out of the four shortcuts now, squares of binomials. In a trinomial, check and see if the first term and the last term happen to be perfect squares. If they are, then there's a shortcut available to you so that you don't have to do cross them up and split the middle. Well, in this case, 9 is perfect square, x squared is 2, 16 is as well. So set up your parentheses for your two binomials. Put in on the left the square root of the 9 and the square root of the x. Put in on the right the square root of the 16. So now I've got 3x, I've got 4 in both places. Now here's the place where you have to do a double check. This is the tricky part about this example. Take a, either from either of these two binomials, that 3x, multiply it times c. So that's um, 3x as you've actually, this is actually the square root of a, I should be saying, the square root of c. Multiply those things. Notice you've got 12x now. Double that. Is what you get, in other words, 12x doubled, does that match this? Here it does. 12x times 2 is 24x. That means, because these are both plus signs, that those are both positive. It's a shortcut that almost doesn't make sense. It seems too easy. But what happens here is, I've got a pair of binomials. They're going to end up being identical to each other, these two binomials, if these are perfect squares and the square roots of those perfect squares, when they're multiplied, if you double them, they match your middle term. It's kind of a similar situation when you've got a slight difference, a negative sign here. None of this will work if that's negative. But if this is negative, then again, set up your binomial with your uh, square roots in place, and if 4 times 3x, which is 12x, times 2 does match here, and it does once again, this time they're both going to be minus. When that's a minus sign here, these are both going to be minus. So let's double check one other example here. Try this and see if it works. Notice that this basically follows the pattern of this trinomial here. You do have a perfect square here, just like you did here. You do have a perfect square here, just like you did here. And you do have a minus sign here, just like you did there. So see if you can figure out whether or not this shortcut is going to work for this problem. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'll show you the answer. OK, I'm going to assume that you've tried this. Well, I would have put these in their positions, parens, the square root of 4x squared, which is 2x, at the front of both binomials, and the square root of 25, which is 5, at the right end of both binomials. Now I'm hoping that 5 times 2x times 2, or doubled in other words, is going to match b. Well, 5 times 2x is 10x. 10x doubled is 20x. Doesn't match 13x. So sorry, the shortcut isn't going to work on this problem. So I do, at this point, have to use the cross mod technique. 4 times 25 is 100. At the bottom, I'm going to put negative 13. And unfortunately, it turns out that there aren't any factors of 100 that add up to make negative 13. So this problem can't even be factored at all. It's not factorable. But the shortcut's always worth trying because it saves you a lot of time. So this problem combines a lot of the ideas that I've given you. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'll show you the answer. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've worked on this one. What you would want to do first is you'd want to move that 50 over. Whoops. 
You'd want to move that 50 over so you've set the trinomial equal to zero. Now the next step is to see if there's anything that you can factor out of everything, and certainly there is. There's that two that you can pull out. So now I've got two times, in parens here, a simpler um, trinomial. Now I'm going to try to factor this. So is this a perfect square? It is. 4x squared is. 25 is as well. So I'm going to leave the two on the outside, and I'm going to have two sets of parens. Square root of 4x squared is going to be 2x. Put that at the front of both. Uh, square root of 25 is 5. Put that at the right side of both binomials. Now, because that's a minus sign, I'm hoping these are both going to be minuses. But for that to work, I've got to do 5 times 2x, which is 10x, and double that. 10x doubled is 20x. That does work. Put those minuses in place. This is now completely factored on the left side. It's set equal to 0. If I want to know what x is, well, I can forget about the 2. I could have divided that away. 0 over 2 is still 0. So either this is 0 or that is. But these are identical. That means 2x minus 5 has to equal 0, which means x is 5 halves. And that's the solution to this equa equation that I was hoping you would come up with. Okay, that's it for the shortcuts that um, I wanted you to know. And come into class with questions that you have about any of these. I'd be happy to explain.